Hey guys, it's Jim Bounds with Motorhome Rehab Ranch, and guess what? I'm back in Orlando after an incredible trip to uh, Utah, to Bonneville High School, and some of the crazy stuff we did out there, and a drive all the way across country and back in my coach, JG. Um, <clears throat> one, it's an incredible trip. Two, thank you for all the people that helped me. Uh, uh, Mark Creel, Alabama RV. Uh, Jason Stryker came came with me out there, uh, and uh, at your leisure TV, AYLTV.com on YouTube. <clears throat> it is a they sponsored us to do all this thing, and I really appreciate their efforts. Thank you very much. Well, uh, another good thing today is that uh, I have my editor uh, Emily. Say hi, Emily. Yep, there she is. Uh, if you notice, I didn't have to push the button to start the start the video, so we got progress, right? <clears throat> and um, I want to use the technology and to help you guys uh, know more about this stuff. Uh, when we started this, I had a had an email or a text saying that they just wanted the part numbers on one piece of paper because they wanted uh, to have all the information about what I'm going to say. Well, dude, there's a lot more to it than just part numbers. All right. Part number, as a matter of fact, is the easy part. If you remember in the uh, in the video that we did the timing chain, I talked about how to use the internet to find the parts you need, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute here. Um, <clears throat> today, this video and this series of videos is going to be about some things that I learned about fuel delivery uh, going across country from Orlando, Florida to Utah and back again, kind of like uh, from the Shire to Mordor and back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I learned a lot about fuel system, and I would like to tell it to you from the beginning to end. There may be something in here that might be helpful to you. Okay, so it's going to take more than one one sit down here. So uh, uh, start watching for it. All right. <clears throat> so what do I need to do? I need to drive from Orlando, Florida. To, uh, to basically uh, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, with a motorhome that's been sitting, I know, for two and a half years because I sat in it. It was where I was at uh, at the shop while it was all closed down and, and all the things happened. <clears throat> and I lived in that motorhome the entire time at the shop. Well, you say, well, what's wrong with it? Well, just get in and go. Well, you know, you think that about a new car. But if you don't touch it, it still fails. I mean, things go bad. You, it's, it's amazing. Well, <clears throat> I went through that. It took about two weeks to get the motor ready to go. I had to put brakes on it. Brakes went away completely. Found out one of my wheel bearings was spinning. Had to do all the wheel bearings. Fuel system. That's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> so what did I do about the fuel system? I have two original... 25 gallon fuel tanks made out of metal. Now, I tried to put high test gas in it the last time that I left, but I let it sit. But still, 50 years of uh, ethanol and uh, fuel formulations that steel tanks are not really suited for. Driving the coach around the shop around Orlando seemed to be okay, but I knew that those tanks had stuff in it. <clears throat> so what do we do? All right. Jason's going to go out there with me, so maybe just to protect his, uh, his well-being, <laughs> he helped me put together a fuel system. Now, fuel today is pretty clean. So we weren't trying to get the fuel filtered as much as the stuff that the fuel tank put in the fuel get it back separated to go to the tank, to the uh, coach. Now I'm running Phytech fuel injection also. So <clears throat> there is a five micron filter in the front of your carburetor that every carburetor has. I mean, Rochester put that in there to keep anything bigger than five microns out of that carburetor. Now, it stands to reason that, that fuel injectors need uh, a similar protection. So what we put in 
was a seven micron filter. We're going to talk about it in a middle in a minute. That's to get the garbage down to where they would not clog up the injectors. And early on when we started with Phytech, we were having injector issues. Problem was a regular inline filter is about 100 microns. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is a filter that we used coming directly out of the fuel tank. You've seen them. It's all over the place. Now, how do you find this? Quite seriously, you go to Google and type in, what did I type in? Uh, glass fuel, automotive fuel filter. And it'll come up. This one comes up and this one belongs to Dorman. Uh, 995. You'll probably find them for probably 20 bucks or something like that. That filter is designed to get the garbage, the chunks, the big stuff out of the fuel. And it's glass. You can see you can see the flow. You can see that you have flow. Now I know somebody here, well, you can put glass under the coach, blah blah blah. I understand that. <clears throat> Put it on the outside of the frame rail where you can look at it and get to it and see it while you're if you stop on the side of the road with trucks going by you can lay down behind beside it and you can look at that filter and you can see if it's clogged or not that's where the big thing is that's what you need to do all right now out of this we went into an electric fuel pump yeah yes it's phytech i did not use uh Phytech's uh, force fuel system, which a lot of coaches do. Mine's a basic system. The uh, fuel comes through that filter into a high pressure electric fuel pump, pushes it to the uh, throttle body, and then it returns it back to the tank. Okay? So we use a regular electric fuel pump in line, just in front of this, on the outside of the frame rail. Once again, you can get to it. The highest failure rate in electronics are relays and motors. So your entire coach is running on a little 12-volt electric motor. Because if it fails, it's over. I would carry a second electric fuel pump, which I did. Then coming out of that electric fuel pump, it goes into another filter. It goes into, again, a very fine filter. You say, well, what is it? Well, let me show you how to find out. You go online. You call it, you, you search Google for a Wix 33689 fuel filter. Go. There it is. You say you want to get the right part number. A guy uh, uh, texted me uh, uh, when we were doing the timing chain, said that he went to CarQuest and they didn't know anything about the numbers. The whole idea is you get hooked into the search engine. Search engines, that's right. Most of the search engines, that people that when they don't know what they're doing, uh, most of the search engines, they'll say, well, what car is it for? Okay, well, that doesn't help us. But the search engine set up that it recognizes part numbers. If you just do any, you don't do anything more, but in 33689, or Wix 33689, or just even 33689 into Google, it will take you to that filter right there. And the filter is a very cool filter in that it's a, it's a very large filter. It's over two, two and something inches uh, in diameter. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, it's a metal case. It's for high pressure. Okay, so it'll be after the pressure. Hmm. You got to know which buttons to push, right? It'll be after the filter. There's three eighths inch barbs on it. Now, actually, it's a it's. Uh, I thought it was a Ford filter, and it had Ford dis quick disconnects. It's actually a GM filter, with a with a uh, they call it an inline system. If you get the adapters that have 3 8 barbs on it, then you can quickly disconnect it. But you can stick a 3 8 hose on it and put a clamp on it just as easy. <clears throat> so out of that filter, it's a set, it's, there we go, it's a 7 micron, uh, big, heavy-duty filter. And it'll show up. <clears throat> and again, you have that on the outside of the frame rail that if there is a problem, you can get to it. 
then you feed that to the fuel system. Okay, that's what I left with. I pulled out of the rear tank. Okay, I put back into the rear tank through the fill. I mean, through the drain. So through the drain, yes. You want to take out of and put back into the same cavity. Fuel injection doesn't understand two two fuel tanks. <clears throat> so going out, I had the front fuel tank, the auxiliary tank, feeding the main rear tank. And then we were pulling off of and putting back into that tank. All right. This is what I left with, hoping that um, I can get all the way to Utah without clogging up injectors uh, with my fuel injection system because of all the stalactites and stuff in my tank. Well, <clears throat> we're... Uh, we're running out of time here. Let me tell you that I stopped every 40 miles and cleaned out that filter. Say, how'd you clean it out? Get a uh, can of starter fluid. <laughs> had a little had a had a uh, towel set up with a wrench to take off the clamp, two hose clamps to block off the, the uh, fuel, a wrench to open up that glass filter. Spray it out with starter fluid, put it all back together. We got it down in less than two minutes to change that filter. But if we had not had that filter in there, we'd have had big trouble to get in Utah, all right? So takeaway on today's video is filter your, filter your fuel. If you're going to use steel tanks, filter the fuel and have a way to clean your filter, okay? All right, <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit more, uh, more episodes about some more things that happened out there. Uh, his, his fuel system was one of the major issues going out there and coming home. All right. So look, if, if you thought this was uh, uh, value at all, uh, hit like uh, on YouTube and on Patreon. Give me a comment. Tell me what you think about this. We've got more uh, coming up on this. Uh, and um, I appreciate your support. If you want to see more of this, become a ranch hand. Uh, you can go on Patreon and they'll tell you a bit more how to do it. Until next time, though, we'll see you.